you focus on the breath to settle into the body. It's like settling into a house. If it's a place where you've been living continually for a long time, there's not that much you have to do. But if you've been away, there's a lot of cleaning up. This is why John Lee recommends that as soon as you are able to stay with the breath for a bit, you start moving your attention around the body to notice how the breathing feels in the different parts. Part of this is to clean things up. After all, if you want to settle in here, you want it to be a comfortable place. So you work through the different rooms of the house, the back, the arms, the legs, the head, the area around the eyes, the area around the ears, all the different parts of the body, to see how the breath energy is flowing as you breathe in, as you breathe out. And notice where it feels blocked where there's tension, tightness, a sense of heaviness, and see if you can breathe through those things. So you move around for a bit, then you choose a spot to settle down. And this is provisional. You're choosing a spot you're going to try out for a while. Again, you're getting to know the different spots. What is it like to be focused down in the stomach? What is it like to be focused in the middle of the chest, the base of the throat, the palate, the tip of the nose, the top of the head, the middle of the head? Some people are very sensitive to this. They find that where they're focused in the body is going to have quite a huge impact on how the concentration goes or what kind of concentration develops. If you tend to have a lot of nervous energy focused in the lower part, of the body so from the neck on down. If you tend to get drowsy, you can bring your attention up. Until you get a good sense of which is the most congenial spot for you right now, then stay there. Have a sense of commitment. And then from that spot, allow your awareness to spread out. And that work you did earlier to clean up the different parts of the body will make it a lot easier for the awareness to spread. Because at the same time the awareness spreads, you want to get a sense that the breath energy and all the different parts of the body is coordinated. What does it mean to be uncoordinated? Well, sometimes it feels that in one part of the body the breath is going down, another part it's going up. Or there's a part where it's coming in from the front but also coming in from the back, and they meet. And either they meet and mingle nicely, or else they meet and there's a sense of conflict. To try to resolve those conflicts. Because you're trying to develop a good place to stay right here, a place where you really can settle in. And as the Buddha says, indulge in the pleasure of the concentration. That doesn't mean you forget your breath and just hang out with the pleasure for a while. You have to still be with the breath. But a lot allow the sense of ease to flow through the body, to nourish the body, to refresh the mind. This helps in two ways. One, it, it's healing for the body, it's healing for the mind. And secondly, it provides a really good foundation for insight to arise. One is insight into how the mind moves around. And it creates worlds for itself and then moves into those worlds. That's the process the Buddha calls becoming. Becoming happens on the large scale and it happens on the small scale. On the large scale, of course, is when you die and are reborn someplace else. You're a new person in a new world. That's one shift in becoming. But there's another shift in becoming that happens in the mind. You have a desire. And then you look at the world around you to see how you can fulfill that desire. And 
the nature of the desire is going to color the world that you're interested in. If you have a desire for pizza, okay, the nearest pizzeria is the most important thing. But also, how are you going to get there? What's getting in the way of your getting there? What's going to help you get there? That's the world of the pizza desire. And then there's the you of the pizza desire. Part of the you, of course, is the part of you that's going to feel satisfied by having the pizza. And there's the part of you that's going to be able to get the pizza. Either make it yourself or go out and buy it. And those are the two sides of you, the consumer and the producer. They get born into that world of the pizza desire. Anything else in the world at the moment that's not relevant to that desire for pizza just gets shoved into the background. And this way, even though we're all sitting in the same room, we're all in different worlds. That can either happen that you lose interest in the pizza and you because you've gained interest in something else, and there's another desire. Well, that creates another world, and there's another you. Sometimes you have conflicting desires, which means there are conflicting senses of the world, conflicting sense of who you are. And all this is going on in the mind all the time. And it's this small-scale becoming that fuels and drives a large-scale becoming, because it's all based on desire. Then your efforts to fulfill the desire. And that's what happens at death as well. As the Buddha said, it's craving and clinging that provide the bridge over to the next life, in the same way that the wind provides a bridge by which fire can spread from one house to another. So it's a process. It's going to have huge consequences when you die, but it's having consequences right now. And the ruts you get into of the desires you give in to, whether you focus on and actually try to fulfill. Those will tend to lead you to a particular rebirth. It's like when you go out in the winter, you're driving along a street and there are some pretty deep ruts in the street and you fall into the ruts, well it's very hard to get out of the ruts. And if they lead you into a parked car or into a tree by the side of the road, okay, it's going to be hard to pull out because the ruts are deep. So you want to be looking at what kind of ruts are you creating in the mind. This is why the Buddha has us develop you know, desires to be generous, desires to be virtuous, desires to meditate, because those are good ruts to have in the mind. After all, when you're dying, the mind is weakening quite a bit because it's putting up with a lot of pain. And often there's a lot of fear. And on top of that, you're going to be making some decisions. And they may be drugging you so that you don't feel too much pain. And so the tendency will be to go where the ruts lead you. So while you're healthy and alert right now, try to create some good ruts in the mind. So your desire is to be here with the breath. This too is a state of becoming. You've got the world of the body inside here, and there's the you who's trying to settle in. Well, that's a becoming too, but it's the best kind of becoming. It's the becoming that forms part of the path, because it enables you to see things you didn't see before. When distractions come in, you recognize them as distractions. If the mind doesn't have a specific desire to stay focused, then it just kind of wanders around. And there's no sense of being distracted at all. It's wandering all over the place. But it's just doing its normal thing. But when you set your mind on one topic and tell yourself, I want to stay with this one topic, then everything else leads away. That's a distraction. And you begin to see how it happens. There's a stirring someplace right where the mind and the body meet. And to begin with, it's kind of an energy stirring. It's hard to say whether it's mental or physical, but you slap a label on it. 
And the labels you slap on it have to do with your desires. Sometimes you want to think about something, so you have this little stirring is the seed by which you can think about it. And then you go, and you're off in another world. It's when you're here filling the body with your awareness that you can sense these little stirrings. And you can get quicker and quicker at zapping them. It's like one of those video games where you have to have a large frame of awareness so that you're aware of the entire screen, because the enemy can come in at any little pixel on the screen at all. So they're what they call a soft focus. You are focused, but you're taking a large range. And then as soon as you have a little stirring anywhere, you zap it. And then you go back to your center. And you stay with that soft focus until something else begins to start. Well, you zap that, and you can maintain yourself in really stable concentration this way. There is some movement. You're protecting it. If the concentration isn't protected by your mindfulness and alertness, it's not going to. It's not going to last. There has to be something hovering around it, and the hovering will get less and less necessary as you get more and more settled. But again, it's part of the settling in. So you're learning about becoming right here, right now. And creating some habits around the becoming. Ideally, you're going to be learning about becoming so you can go beyond it. But if things happen so that you've still got work to do as you face the fact that you're going to have to leave the body, well, you've got some good habits that you've inculcated in the mind. the good ruts that will lead to a good place. They won't plow you into the side of a parked car or a tree to take you the road to some place where you really, really want to go, a place where you can continue practicing. So even though they say that concentration on its own is not enough to, to lead to awakening, still it develops the discernment that you're going to have to use. That directed thought and evaluation that we start as we sort through the body. That's part of right resolve, which is part of the discernment factor in the path. And the alertness that protects us, that's part of mindfulness. All the good parts of the path are all present here in potential form. And so you're not going to have to look anywhere else to gain the discernment you need. It's just a matter of getting that discernment that you're using to get the mind settled down more and more refined. And John Sowell used to talk about this. He says, as you get the mind to settle down, you detect any disturbance at all. Okay, that's an that's instance of suffering, an instance of stress, dukkha. You deal with that, and then you get more sensitive, and you find more subtle things going on that you didn't see before. Well, you deal with those. And in the dealing with them to get the mind to settle down, you've got to develop your discernment. And with that developed discernment, then you can see subtle things you wouldn't have seen otherwise. There's a, this is a necessary factor of the path. Settling in right here. So try to do it with some sensitivity and try to do it well.